Welcome to the Witches Movie Coven. Thank you for tuning in, everybody. This is the Witches Movie Coven. Witches talking about witches in movies. So grab your goat, grab something to drink, grab your magic wand and uh, maybe a cloak or two on this one, because <laughs> we are going to talk about the movie Little Witches. My name is Patty Negri, and I am one of your five, four, sometimes seven hosts. <laughs> and they come, they go, depending on internet. Um, you might know me from The Witching Hour, my regular podcast, or from Ghost Adventures, or Portals to Hell, or a lot of YouTube. But right now, right here, I am a witch in the Honorable Witches Movie Coven. Um, Richard Lael, who are you? Uh, I am Richard Lael, which is one name, not two. If I were just Richard, I'd be a... Yes, that is right. Richard Lale <laughs> is one name, not two. I am the gentleman psychic. I am a teacher at University Magicus. You had you probably seen me on Ghost Adventures or maybe a long time ago, America's Next Stop Model. I don't know. I've done a lot of stuff. I decorate things. I create things. I paint them. You know, I drink a lot of tea. That's you know why I'll probably run to the run to the loo, skip to the loo, my darling, pretty soon. Thank you, Jason. I'm Jason. You probably don't know me from any TV show other than this, but I have written a lot of books. Here's one of them because it happened to be nearby. That's a book about you. I've written nine books for Llewellyn, and I'm often on the road speaking at witchcraft and pagan festivals across North America. Woo! Thank you. And Heather. Hi, I'm Heather Green. I'm the author of Lights camera witchcraft a definitive guide to witches in american cinema and television i am an acquisitions editor at llewellyn so i work with the authors like jason and, uh, <laughs> and other many witchy authors and i was also a journalist who focuses on the occult and witchcraft and all things in between and uh i am also a part of this wonderful coven and we are very very opinionated Oh, and here she goes, Gigi. She may be flipping in and out depending on internet, but we have a very, very special guest re replacing <laughs> Courtney just for today is Gigi. Tell everybody hi and who you are. Hi, everybody. I am Gigi from Paranormal XL Podcast and Killer Kitchen Chronicles. Um, I'm just a little bit of everywhere. <laughs> and that's it. So we are talking about, <laughs> thank you. Hi, Gigi, everybody's saying. Um, the movie, Little Witches, I just saw it for the first time last night or the night before, I can't remember. Um, it was, was it 1996 on that one? It was. Now, I maybe not everybody's seen it. Hopefully all of you who watch our show regular. Number one, we want to thank you for watching to our show and telling your friends and coming back the week after week. We appreciate it because otherwise we'd just be here talking to ourselves. <laughs> with our goats, goats in hand, sad, sad story without you like Colin and Amy and Mary and we <sighs> hopper. Okay, anyway, this movie, I'd never seen it before, 1996. But if any of you perhaps haven't seen it, Richard Lael, do you have an unbiased synopsis of this fine <laughs> I do. And I'm going to start with the boring one because I watched it and I couldn't figure out what was going on. So I, I looked up this on Wikipedia and it said um, an ancient book lures six young girls into becoming witches and casting spells. That's the, the cut and dry version. It's so like that's not the movie I watched. The movie <laughs> I watched. The movie I watched. Um, well, it was um, it was soft core. I will mm. not say the rest of it. It was definitely <laughs> soft core. Um, it has everything that you would desire in one of those soft core uh, films. Um, it has it has the girl that is naughty, who, by the way, is a high school girl. It has it has the crazy nun. It has the demented priest. It has the boy who's a virgin. It has the young innocent girl who rescues everybody. It has demons. It has ancient guardians. It has half naked men and a lot of naked women. Something about trying to throw the book in the sea as if even in 1996 he had never known you know like oh we're gonna we're gonna burn the ouija board and then it comes back the next day 
yeah, like he none of this exists in this universe. Um, I, I'm still scratching my head over it. I, I, um, it's 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 definitely witches, but I think I should say, um, some of these ladies are not witches. Some of these ladies, one would be referred to with a different word, but that word is not used in polite society unless one is at a dog show. <laughs> and that's all I have on that. Thank you. And now we understand this film. Um, Heather, I do believe this one may be in your book. Um, it is sort of, it's mentioned, but it's more, it's a Canadian, mainly a Canadian film. So I really don't focus on it, but I do mention it for an important reason, similar to the way I mentioned Harry Potter and several other, uh, non, uh, fully American films because it has a, a tie in to one of the biggest, uh, American, um, witchcraft films, the craft. And so there's a little, there's some interesting facts about that. So Little Witches came out in 1996, which if you've read my book or heard me talk about the 90s, that was a watershed year for the switchover from the Satanic Panic witch films to the um, You Go Girl witch films of the late 90s. So this sort of fits into that, the, the craft where it's that 1996 where you get a little of both. You get the same You Go Girl stuff going on and you get it nicely dosed with this satanic panic stuff. Now, obviously, this one has more satanic panic than You Go Girl than The Craft does. It also had a much lower budget. So a lot of people have said that this movie is a um, poor um, follow-up to The Craft, or they were trying to um, capitalize on The Craft. It came out seven months after The Craft was released. However, that is not the case because this film was actually in production and written before The Craft, long before The Craft came out. So there was a coincidence in terms of the uh, creation of the story and the wanting to film it, um, it is not, it would not have been unusual for people to want to do satanic teenage witch films at this time. So it's not that much of a stretch to understand that. But um, they do say, um, and there's multiple reports from the producers and, and, and the um, other people involved, that the film actually was uh, in, it was wrapped, they were done filming before the craft came out and then when the craft came out they were in post and actually worked to edit the film the producers worked to edit the film to uh toward to capitalize on the popularity of the craft so it wasn't created based on the craft but it actually capitalized on the success or tried to capitalize on the success it came out of course seven months later um a few other notes about this film that are interesting is that the director has disowned it um, so <laughs> up to what uh, she wanted. And of course, she is important because many witchcraft films are not actually done until more recently directed by women. So that's an interesting piece of this. The uh, final cut, the editor actually quit or was fired halfway through and they got a makeshift editor, or, you know, associate editor or some kind of uh, helper to edit the list? film. What was that? You couldn't even tell. They got an editor off of Craigslist. Yeah, yeah, if Craigslist didn't exist back then. But yes, they got an editor, you know, and um, and they the producers pretty much ran the show as far as the editing was concerned. And of course, they were trying to make it compete with the craft or, or to capitalize on the success of the craft. Um, I, I read one article that <laughs> the guy said that the craft was a um, expensive uh an expensive copy of, of little witches actually. Mm -hmm. So, um, so you see some different things. And I think, I think of what, what Richard Lale was picking up on there is not so much soft core, but I think if the seventies, early seventies, um, witch films and the late nineties, you go girl, witch films had a love child, it would be this film. I think that's the best way to describe it. Um, there is actually a pretty decent cast in it that you will recognize some figures, some characters. There's Zelda Rubinstein, Clea Duvall, and um, Jack Nance, and a few other folks that you might recognize. So it's not low budge, but it's not totally low budge. So it's a very interesting one to talk about. And I think it's a very interesting one to talk about since it's poised right at the time when things were changing for representation of witchcraft and witchcraft 
and witches in films. So this is why this film becomes important. Um, so I'll leave it at that and we can start discuss. I'll save my opinions and stories and all of that good stuff for for later. <laughs> let's let's just hope that the director's cut is there released is at some point. <laughs> there is no because done. I am there's sure no director's that her cut. vision is incredible and that it would be an entirely different film, entirely different film. and probably a cinematic masterpiece that we have been deprived of. Just <laughs> sadness, sadness. The whole show will now be sadness on my part. Sadness. There is no director's cut. She is she is turned away from it. She there there's no director's cut. There's not even an editor's director's cut. There's not even it's the producers, these two young guys that that ah uh, that explains it. <laughs> you can let me hope. Heather. Can let be. me hope. You you know what? You can. Oh. If Courtney can dream about a second uh, uh, killing, killing, killing tree movie, then you can dream about a director's <laughs> cut for Little Witches. Yes. So when did the director leave? Does anybody know? Was it like uh, after shooting or when they saw the edit? <laughs> Uh, she didn't leave. Movie? She didn't leave. She's just disavowed it. So she just said they just took over and I'm done. They did not. They didn't. This is what you know. I, I had to read four or five different articles. I'd have to get back and we'd have to dig into the production notes and stuff to find out what happened. But apparently, she and the producers did not get along right from the start. There's some stories. Mm. The actors say they won't talk about what happened. So this is you know many years later. We'd have to do some deep, deep, deep dive journalism to find out exactly what happened. But she, I, it, it seems like f the producers and director didn't get along right from the beginning. And the producers are the ones who wrote the script. She had a div different division and it all went crazy from there. Hopefully being on our show will reignite interest in this <laughs> masterpiece. And so we will get closer to that director's cut. People will start talking about the movie again and then we'll have like a sequel, maybe older witches or middle-aged oh, witches or something. Just, to, just to see where everything ends up. <laughs> I'm all for the middle-aged witches. They're see all... where their breasts have fallen. The, 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 the hips <laughs> have beautiful naked young breasts have fallen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just no, more, no more rock hard bosoms. <laughs> it was pretty though. It, 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 oh, it was pretty. It, it was, was beautiful. It, I, I especially it, liked the construction workers. I thought they were very yeah, pretty. They were pretty. <laughs> yeah. Take off your shirt again. Take off your Roll shirt again. It already had it on, but I'm going to take off my shirt again. I love that. Um, yeah, they were beautiful and the girls were beautiful. I did think that all the, the ritual scenes, which were pretty and this and that and weirdly cut, but I kept going, I think they already played that one. I I think that I saw that three times already. I like did they is this on a loop? We just gone back and did it again. That's what it felt like to me. I actually It seems like there was a couple scenes like that. Yeah. That there definitely were. <laughs> and then at the beginning, of course, I'm like, okay, everybody in the house, we need to watch this movie. Okay, kids in the house, out. <laughs> I was like, okay, not a family movie. Sorry. Of course, my 16 year old was like, Mom. I'm like, No, no, no. That's <laughs> mommy's doing research. Because these children are supposed, these girls are supposed to be what, 16 or 17 years yeah. old? Yeah. They, they are, they're, they're little <laughs> girls. Hopefully they're 18. This is their senior year, right? I mean, it is Easter. So if it's their senior year, they could be very close to being eight, all 18. And let's hope so. Because I, I despise, like, naked high schoolers in films. That's gross, especially by 1996. It's yeah. gross. Yeah. I, I was nowhere near 18 when I graduated. I didn't jump. You're just still 17. I was early 17. That was a January birthday. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I assume everyone's my age. Well, then the well, construction like worker. Was, during was, this. Go ahead, Gigi. Sorry. Wasn't the construction worker like, wasn't he supposed to be so much older? And they turned down the one gal and was like, no, my little sister does that. And then the other gal that's the same age goes there, Faith, and then all in love. And he's supposed to be old and she's supposed to be 16. And as I was kind of like, what's happening here? At first, the age thing was a no-no. And then all of a sudden it was okay. 
it's well, okay it's just, because they're Catholic schoolgirls. Oh, yes. I forgot about that. Yes. You're With right. male producers. <laughs> it's like in the gay world, if, 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 if it would have been produced by gay men, then it would have been a bunch of Mormons at a Mormon school because that's <laughs> like, that has replaced the Catholic school in, 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 in pornography. It's replaced it. <laughs> <laughs> just just to, to respond to Sacred Al and Alone, yes, this was Clea Duvall's first film. It was her film debut. So there's that. Yeah, I, I couldn't even there. figure out who she was in the movie. I mean, there's there are a bunch of characters running around, but most of them feel nameless. Like mm -hmm. there's good girl, bad girl, Chubby people girl. who work at school. I mean, that that felt like those were the only names to me. She was the first one to get stabbed by the demon. Oh, okay. That's that why. <laughs> yeah. Fair. She sh she shows up. She's her face is seen more at the beginning of the film than it does it because yeah, you're right. As it goes along, they spend less time identifying the characters, talking. They don't really get into the characters at all. It's very surface character stuff um, going on throughout the film. Um, it's just the full, it's just the narrative and the plot that they focus on. It's just, that's all it is. So you don't really see the faces. One of the girls doesn't even have a line in the film. All her lines were cut apparently or something like that. One blonde girl. Um, so. But don't you find it strange too? I mean, even in, in 1996, I know computers were, were, were more rare in 1996, but the naughty, hopefully 18 year old bride of Satan um, she asks to borrow the, uh, the nerdy girl's computer and she's like, what for? And she's like, just stuff. Okay. I mean, if someone wanted to borrow my computer, I'd go, uh, no. no. And she takes it down to the ritual site too. Like, like it's a laptop. And all I can think of from 1996 are like those candy colored Macs back in the day that were cute. Yes. Like, I can imagine, like, let's get the wheelbarrow out and go see sick <laughs> down there, right? And then we can use the computer while we're there. But it was made in 96, so it wasn't like it was made in 2006 trying to be 96. So they must have known what computers were in 96. Yeah. 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 They, they had a so, laptop. But would, I mean, even if you had a laptop, I think in 96, it, it had to be, you had to connect it to the, the internet of some sort, Right. Like you, you yes. had it like a cable, right? Right. It you wouldn't be yeah, the, the yeah. Ethernet. Oh. Wouldn't be Bluetooth or Wi Fi no. or anything. It would have been a phone cable. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bing, bing, bing. Ah. Yep. Dial up. Yeah, yeah, Bing didn't even exist back then. That's how long ago this movie was. No. There was no there was no Google back then. This was 96 so probably i'm trying to think because i worked in technology back then i can't remember which was the search engines it was yahoo Netscape. probably Netscape. Yeah. and um oh what's the first one um i can picture it but i can't think of the name right now but yeah this was before google before all of that ask AOL. excite ask jeeves yeah uh, lycos <laughs> oh the like wreckage was... of Silicon Valley. <laughs> yeah, that was that. But there was, they had a laptop. They had a lot of interesting things going on. I think there's some, I think, you know, as, as there's a lot of problems with this movie, obviously, um, that we're talking about. But I think there's some interesting things too. And, and I'm going to just say is that when this movie, I saw this movie when it came out. So probably on VHS, um, I was in school and this movie, this movie was one of the movies that made me realize that I needed to, to start studying film, which is in film. Cause I would, I had started practicing and getting involved in the occult, um, a, a several years earlier in college, obviously, um, like many people's stories and, um, it hadn't been that long. And so I was really, uh, you know, very interested in everything witchcraft. So watching a movie like this was exciting, despite the fact that it uh, portrays witches as, agents of the devil it's not a positive representation of witches but um between I'm this agent one, of the devil yeah <laughs> but a positive one richard well i see you as a positive, positive agent of the devil 
That um, is also true. <laughs> so, you know, I know that's a nuance that maybe people don't appreciate that I do. So, um, but this was fascinating to me and being in film school at the time and between this film and the craft and then the start of Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Charm and just the start rolling in that direction, I realized this is what I want to study. I want to study these representations and why is this film different than the craft and what makes this film different from it? So this really started to pique my brain and understanding the sociology and the history and witchcraft and everything. So as as, problem as problematic as it is, um, this film for me was something that started me down a certain path. So that's how I look at it. And I didn't, I, I didn't mind it when I watched it originally. <laughs> when I watched it originally, I thought it was, oh, this is fun. This is this is like a stupid fun movie. Like I and I, you know, watching rewatching it again, I laughed. I was like, oh my goodness, this I I remember this so well now. <laughs> so I'm like, just oh, yeah. I'm just glad that like one good thing came out of this film, and that is Heather's love of witch movies and okay. desire to study them. That is the one good thing <laughs> that has go. come out of this film. And, and you know what? How many witch movies do we see that have naked bodies in them that have a, a naked body that is not, that doesn't fit the norm? They allow, they actually filmed the larger girl naked, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. never ever happens. Sort know? of. This, if you watch closely, not that I watch that closely, all of her like, really private parts are covered up the whole time like they they don't linger on her and that she was shot in such a way that there is no nipple because i thought that was really fascinating that there was a different size woman there so that's mm -hmm. where my eye went the whole time because i wanted to see if they were going to be honest about it and i'm not sure that they completely were or perhaps she could have had something in her contract that said no i don't want to do that right. but if, how she is portrayed is kind of hidden even though she's in the naked seats. So I must say, and I liked having a bigger girl, a naked bigger girl and showing it too, but I, they did very stereotypical open her up in the beginning. I didn't like that just cliche stereotypical. I ate pancakes. Yes. I ate this. It's like, right. uh, you know, I didn't think that was necessary. No. That's her mm -hmm. character development. Cause it not like the craft where the craft, you kind of got to know the girls along the way this one, except for the little pancakes. known fact that the character of fat amy in the pitch perfect movies is based on this character from little witches just just wow. throw just throwing that out there <laughs> that's 100 percent completely true just gonna and throw that out there character. she's a great character 100 <laughs> percent true 100 percent true <laughs> um the, yeah i i i the different one of the differences between the craft is you'd actually get a good character. There is no character development in this movie. There really isn't. Even the main characters. That's not what this movie is. This is movie is directly aiming for that plot, um, the salaciousness of it, and so diving into the that fear and riding on the fear that teenagers are being seduced by witchcraft and Satanism. And that's, that is the driving point of this and to use every single trope that the misogynistic types of horror use, throwing it all in there and mixing it up and throwing it back out at the screen. Would the original, would the, was the director, did they film something different? Would the director's cut be different? Would it be more like the craft? I don't know that it would have been because the story is different. Um, there was not, as far as I know, which a witch on the scene like the witch. The the craft aimed for some reality with Wicca, some attachment, some connection to it. This one does not at all. They use salt for like two seconds. Well, <laughs> Zelda, I mean, Zelda Rubenstein's door had salt outside of it. Yeah, yeah. So there was, you know, was... <laughs> and, and they, they called themselves the Illuminati. So. Illuminati. Clearly, witchcraft, magic, Illuminati, naked high school girls. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I, if, you know, if they would have been college, do they have they have college? It would have been less weird. College naked girls, because I they were beautiful scenes. I like I like naked girls, but you don't want to go. I'm liking a sixteen year old naked girl. Uh -uh. Nope. 
No, no. no. Nope. Like I said, 70s, 70s horror, be horror and 90s, you go girl horror, have a love child. This is what you get. <laughs> <laughs> Do you all know what I mean by the seven, by the 90s, you go girl, which movies? <laughs> There's a string of them and the craft starts it. So include the t mostly TV shows, Charmed. It's all upper yeah. middle class, pretty white girls doing witchcraft type, type thing. Buffy the Vampire Slayer fits in there, of course. There's a number of them. Witch House, I think. Yeah. Sabrina, the original one. Sabrina. It's just a string no, of them. Yeah. I tell you, though, there were so many plot holes that if this film had a slightly higher rating, all of the plot holes would be filled. <laughs> oh, holy crap. <laughs> that can't be topped the rest of the night. Thanks for watching the Witches movie. <laughs> we will see you next week. Did nobody see this when it came out? No. No. Wow. How did I how was it on my radar? I mean, I I I don't remember it being hidden or it was just like Go into the, you know, video rental store, and there it was. No, I, I. No. Yeah, no, I, no. I didn't. I was a witch. I didn't go, and I like witchy movie, but that one got past yeah. me. I didn't go into that room in the video store, Heather. I just, I just didn't. <laughs> it was in the normal. It's rated R. <laughs> I actually did. I remember going to Blockbuster, and I liked horror. I didn't watch this film. But it would have been around not around the time that it came out, 96, 97. And I I went to get a film that was called Head of the Family. Do not watch that film. This is like <laughs> this is like the witch from the sea for Courtney. Head of the family is it's it's like this film, it's like tonight's film, only worse. So head of the family is. So they existed, Heather. I, 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 they up and down those same aisles. You and I, we were on the same page. Yeah, it was a, just a witch film uh, on the aisle. I probably rented the craft and then saw that one and looked for other ones that are just like it. And this one, this one came out. And uh, you know, it's 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 interesting that they they were timed so closely. But again, this one, this one has the. Uh, the residue of the satanic panic on it far more than the craft does. Although the craft has a little bit still, but not, not like this one. When you put the two movie posters up against each other, the craft uh -huh. and this movie, you can really see how the craft impacted the marketing because the, the she looks like oh, the girl yeah. from little witches almost looks like what for is balk or something. Oh, yeah. Right? Like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, when I saw that graphic for the first time, I thought, Oh, it's from the craft and not from a different movie because they really seem to be really trying to steal that whole aesthetic there. Though yes. the picture in the little bottom left-hand corner looks like the pictures that you would see on the covers of the movies in that little back room. It's just a, it's just a little, it's just a little too scanty, scantily yeah. clad there. And there are a number of those. And there's another movie. It's and it's in 2002. I want to say 2003 called Witches of the Caribbean. Has anyone seen that one? No. No. Okay. You don't have to give it all big eyes or anything. These is also teenagers that they're lost in a special school stuff, and they're left, and they get into the craft. They get into witchcraft, and um, then there's there's they all change. They all change their their. Um, dress at some point when they all get involved and do their first rituals on the beach beaches are in all these movies and um then they're walking down the beach it's right out of the craft right I out mean, they're, they're I that, 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 that this film in particular had a lot of beaches i found the school's proximity to water strange to be honest because you looked at the school and the you know, the outside shots, and it didn't look like anything that would be near an ocean. And then mm -hmm. apparently the ocean is about 50 feet away, which would have been like really prime property, right? Nice. Like you'd be selling that and like retiring somewhere. It was it was really odd. I well, thought yeah. that the ocean was there. I thought what was odd was that whenever they show the internal 
parts of the church and the church's office. There are stained glass windows everywhere, and it's it's midnight or it's 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 it, it's dark outside. And then you have all of this beautiful refracted refracted light coming through all of these stained glass windows from every single angle, and it's it's midnight. <laughs> it's so, <pretty>. yeah. <laughs> so they didn't do the uh, establishing shot and they failed on correcting the lighting to match the time of day so okay <laughs> doesn't the movie end during the day which is a weird time for a witchcraft movie to end there's a lot going on in the full sunlight which made it look like a kind of a dirty after school special in its own way <laughs> today on abc the dangers of witchcraft and the illuminati you know that's... i i did get confused oh again i was tired i kept i kept wanting to fall falling asleep and going no stay awake i have to watch it but the plot line because of it oh the one with the mark again i was trying to find the story of the old oh, girl with the mark oh the lady had the mark uh, the, no, the, no, the, and then all of a sudden at the end of the film we my people have been protecting what i didn't get i i still didn't get that it was very she, choppy did she know she was that person did did not you know i don't know yeah poor editing to tell the story poor editing to tell the story clearly sure. it was none of our business but I like <laughs> the nun, though. I I did. I mean, I like she she, I liked her. Well, I think we can talk about her. I mean, yeah. Zelda Rubinstein is something special. This is actually not the first uh, witch film she was in. She was in 1989. She was in Teen Witch, which is another fun teenage witch story, totally different type, but also a satanic panic, an early satanic panic one. We can we can we can watch that one and see if we like that one at some point. I don't, there's no nudity in that one. And that one is Damn. really friendly. <laughs> so your family can watch it. Um, <laughs> it's more like Karate Kid, except a witch instead of a karate expert. But um, it's, uh, she was in that one and she was the witch expert who consults and she is brilliant in that one. She does a beautiful job. And of course, her, she's, you know, poltergeist. That's where everybody knows her. <laughs> she's scared she's so all of us kids. She's so wasted in this movie. I mean, she has about yeah. eight minutes of screen time. And when I was a kid, I found her absolutely terrifying in the podcast oh. movies. Right. And I just didn't feel like they did anything with her of any value or consequence. Right. Yeah. She, she eats food alone and she did something weird in the church one night, maybe kind of. And then she prays with a girl and that's it. And then she's done. Yeah. Another, and that's another point that suggests that the cut the producer didn't didn't cut the film properly because why would you have her and some of these other characters these other actors if you were going to produce a film like this it makes no sense i mean that had to be their whole budget mm -hmm. well it certainly wasn't spent on the demon we had dry eyes we had I kept thinking that when talking about the location and this beautiful old church and building, I'm like, oh, they're in Santa Barbara, which is like a super expensive part of just above L.A. because that's the only place that a cool old building, Spanish, whatever building would be on the beach. So this is a high end church and school. Well, you would think so. Those girls are living there. It's a private it's a private school. So yeah. it's got to be something that is considered high end and they have wealthy parents. And they're all abused. There's something wrong with them. They all, it's, that's the same as the craft. They all, there's a reason that they're there and there's a reason why they turn to magic. You have that, that scenario playing out, but it's undercut by the rest of it. It's undercut by the amount of nudity. It's undercut by the bad cuts, the, you know, the poor storytelling, but they all have struggle with something. And that's of course lost. I thought this was like a cheap school because I could only see three employees there the entire time <laughs> that's true that's like where's the great. staff who's cooking dinner like what's going on is there a maintenance crew or anything who are the teachers there's nothing three people run that old school well it was spring break wasn't it it was so everybody else yeah was. easter break or whatever should still be some people around <laughs> gotta have somebody there it's it's just wasn't our business none of your business <laughs> That's right. There was a lot of haughty construction workers not doing a lot of work. 
Taking off their shirts. <laughs> Taking off the shirts is hard work. Uh, cat calling out a minor is hard work. Uh, oogling a, a minor taking her clothes off on a balcony is hard work. Turning up the radio, that must have been extraneous. Yeah. <laughs> One of those construction workers, though, said he was going to Stanford, though, too. So, like, he can't work too hard because apparently his night job is driving up to the Bay Area from Santa Barbara and going to Stanford in between his construction job. So it doesn't what leave you a lot of time to date. It's tough. It's a tough job. <laughs> tough work. One of the review, uh, one of the reviews and the discussions on this film um, that talked about it noted that the the director, the one who has disavowed the film, was actually a music video director in the eighties, and um, they said one of her was uh, one of the music videos she directed was "I Feel for You" um, by. Um, um, Shaka Khan. Shaka Khan. Thank you. I'm like picturing her. Thing. She's a Shaka Khan. Uh, I feel for you. Video was one of her uh, credits. So, so she said. They said that this one reviewer said that the uh, movie has points where it feels like a music video. I don't know if anybody picked up on no, that. It, it was. It was very much like a music video. Yes. It reminded me so much of Turn Around. <laughs> Every now and then. Yeah. Yes, it reminded me very much of that music video, excepting again, they were girls and not boys because, you know, heterosexual fantasies. <laughs> can, can we talk about the music in this movie for a while? Because Please. it is the worst mu mu uh, music I've ever heard in a movie. Right. The background music is terrible. terrible. The pop songs felt like they had stolen them from online but online didn't exist yet so <laughs> i assume somebody gave them a tape while they were walking somewhere and they were like oh let's put this in there it's really like laughably bad all the way through like they didn't want to license anything that was worth you know more than 50 cents and not not the rapper by the by <laughs> they couldn't afford no. 50 cent 50 cent no. <laughs> oh. Like if they had gone downstairs though into the Illuminati room and into club had started playing though, I would have totally freaked out. That would have made a great movie, you know. That would have spiced it up a little better. It would, that would have been <laughs> that would have been baller. That would have been baller. <laughs> Most definitely. Yeah, the music. When you said we got to talk about the music for a few minutes, I'm like, um, there was music. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Why? Call it that. It was so bad and it was so poorly mixed too. It was like hard to hear what the actors were saying at certain points because the music was like louder than they were. You, you, it, it did again. It felt mm -hmm. like an after school special or straight to VHS movie, which it was, I think, right? Or uh, was it in a theater? I, you know what? I, I think it was in the theater, um, but not for long. And I, I did. I'm gonna. I tried to get the numbers on this film, but they aren't appearing easily. And I was going to have to do some uh, deeper research to get the numbers on the box offices. And I just felt like I wasn't going to bother. Um, like, no, it's a, so, um, so yeah, I, I believe usually it's reported as being a v, direct to VHS and this one isn't reported as that. I did not see this. And I did see it when it came out. I did not see it in the theaters. I know it came from a, uh, a v, uh, coming from a, a blockbuster or a, or the before blockbusters. Do you remember when there was a time when they were mom and pop shops and they do five for five? I loved for five for five guys. I would go $5. <laughs> I get five movies. This probably was one of them. I grabbed five movies and that would be my weekend. I know you guys are thinking that's what you did on the weekends. I was a film <laughs> nerd. Yes. That's what I did on the weekends. <laughs> this was probably one of those five for five. Or as a Canadian movie, maybe it only played in Canada for a week or two or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. But, yeah. But it's yeah. like, but it's poor. Like, it just, you compare this to the craft, right, from oh. earlier in the year. The characters are developed. It looks good. It sounds great. The craft has an amazing soundtrack. It looks good. You know, th these movies are night and day different. Yes. Night and day different. The craft. The craft is brilliant, and this one is 
K R A F T. <laughs> <laughs> I think that I, is an insult to Velveeta cheese, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, this one is um, this one is definitely not uh, going to win any awards, but it actually did win an award. But I, I can't remember what it is. But regardless, um, I um, what was I going to say? The craft. The craft, I did not love the craft when it came out. And I'm going to, we've talked about the craft many times. Um, and it is a, a, a centerpiece in, in witchcraft films for sure in so many ways. But I really felt like the craft did started out really well. And then it, it, it went downhill towards the end. And I really was di very disappointed with the ending of the craft and in a lot of the aspects and some, some of the filming and the way the craft went at the end. And I know that's sacrilege to say amongst witches, because that's like, you know, the golden, uh, the golden movie we all, we all hold up, but I did not like the ending of the craft. So I, 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 I didn't like Hocus Pocus either. So I say that out loud. I, 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 <laughs> I never watched the craft. Oh, oh, really? Oh, see, you beat me right there. I've wow. never. <laughs> well, you watch this. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> you you got to watch it. You just have to watch. You have to watch it. It it's it's. It's a, it's a, just a standby. It's, it's a standard bear. It's, it's a centerpiece of, of all of which films. It's one of the ones that I would say, if I'm going to do a, if I was to do a seminar in which films, this would be, the craft would be on it. And I'd probably mm -hmm. actually mention Little Witches because, and I went mentioned Little Witches and Witches. Now, Jason's shaking his head. And I will say this over and over again. You got to know, you got to watch bad ones to know it's good. And that is why the, you know, and watching what the craft did and how it relates to other films and how people copied them. And that's how important the craft was. Little Witches changed its marketing and changed its editing to try to play off of that. Witches of the Caribbean is not a good film, but it tried to do that. But so when you, you say the names of these films, you give them power. And, and sometimes it's best for things to be forgotten. I don't think this needs to be I don't I don't agree with you when it comes to when it comes to bad actors in politics. I f completely agree with you, Jason, or in any social situation. But when it comes to film, I don't agree. I think it's really, really good to watch bad films. I think it's good to see art because sometimes you like a bad piece of art that other or you like a piece of art other people don't like we like, like, I don't like time bandits i, like I think time bandits. bandits is terrible and patty loves it <laughs> <laughs> the i would rather was... watch little witches than time bandits oh i think you're right i think you're right i <laughs> no. would too. that but is see, so true i didn't love That's this a... but i i didn't hate it i i didn't, didn't hate it. it that is no, a step I, it. I didn't mind it because again it was pretty when she got past the high school, it was pretty. I liked the pretty ritual scene. So I, except for that, again, I think they repeated the same scene a few times. Other than that, I, I didn't mind it. All right. <laughs> Anybody else have anything to say about this? Fact? <laughs> the movie discussion, I mean, the music discussion went long. No. See, I had it's to, a I watched it twice. Oh, and and what? I did that what? because I thought I may have missed something. <laughs> I'm like, well, wait a minute, because I know my attention span doesn't last very long, but I'm like, OK, let's do this. And like Patty mentioned, it it seemed like they were repeating scenes. So like the choppiness. So that like messed me up. So I'm like, no, now I have to rewatch this. And like I'm trying to get quotes and I'm like. I got nothing. There's nothing quotable to requote from this movie in my opinion like as i was like well the one thing like faith said i don't know where i belong we've all been able to say that's so, okay that's relatable and then the other funny one was welcome to the pleasure dome like that's <laughs> i'm like okay but yes i did i sat down and i watched it twice and i i didn't miss anything the first time <laughs> the I, time I feel like I, you deserve an award or something. For watching this twice. That is above and beyond. I mean, there are people in this coven who don't even finish some of these films. <laughs> so I, I, I bow to you and your greatness. Huh. 
I saw it twice too, Gigi, but I had like, what, 20 years in between the two watches. So, you know, yeah, a cat's off to you on that one. <laughs> like I so, said, I, I just didn't know if I, if I was missing something, like an, an important part. It was, it was very choppy as, as the editing and putting together and stuff. So it was, for me, it was hard to follow, even though there wasn't essentially a storyline besides here's some teenagers, they go to a Catholic school, they find the devil, like, and then that's it. Yeah, that's, I, yeah, that's it. I want to quote Mary Jane King, the only quote from the Stanford guy, it has to be the right person. So these are obviously out of high school, this, this gorgeous guy who's still a virgin, but the high school <laughs> yeah. person, like, he's still a virgin in 1996. Still a virgin. <laughs> It has to be the right person. So thank you, Mary Jane. <laughs> um, all right. Well, I guess we don't have quotes because there weren't any, and we don't have this. <laughs> you, you've got to appreciate trying twice, though. I mean, that, I did. I that tried. That is tough. That is, that is great. Like, I just got nothing that I, I think, you know, because sometimes things are witty. They would be witty or they're funny or you're like, hmm, you know, that's a good one to repeat and quote it. No, just no, there was that. <laughs> and I apologize for that. I'd like to point out, I, I wanted to point out that this comment from Colin about why is the devil always hiding in Catholic schools? This is actually a, a trope or a narrative trope that is very popular, um, especially in the late 70s, where you start to see a lot of movies come out after the popularity of Carrie. You have Satan's School for Girls. We can do that. We can add that. We have the... Um, uh, oh gosh, there's there's a string of them. The Spell, there's another one. There's a number of, of, of movies that come out in the 70s that are all about Satan and high school girls. So, and, you know, it, it actually is, it, it makes a lot of sense to me. Because, because if he's hanging out with all of these, these high school girls, it's no wonder the devil went down to Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jason. Jason, do we have the Mankey Mini Movie Minute? Oh, man, I heard it was a good one this week. I'm really happy with this one. This, which means it, probably no one will laugh at it because I was so excited about it. <laughs> <laughs> and Courtney's not here to cry, so like it's already going to be anticlimactic. This All is right, not uh, a crying movie. <laughs> All right, here we go. And now, random thoughts from a man forced to watch a movie. He would have never had known existed if it wasn't for this show. It's 9.45 p.m. on a Tuesday night, and I've settled comfortably on my couch, my cat next to me, my fur baby just out of reach, as she often is, while still demanding pettings. The movie starts, and I am immediately transported back in time to 1996, as I wonder if the stream I am watching comes from a third-generation VHS tape. Even in the dark of my living room, it's hard to make out the action on the screen. Everything looks muddy and gray. I get up to adjust the tracking on the VCR and then remember I am not watching a VCR, nor do I own a VCR in the year 2024. Despair creeps in. Little Witches has been playing on my television for all of two minutes and 24 <laughs> seconds. It's now 9.50 p.m. and my wife is looking at me quizzically from across the living room. Is the movie coven making you watch porn? She asks. <laughs> I tell her no, but she remains unconvinced. The background music that was playing definitely, definitely sounds like porno music, she says. She is not wrong, of course, but I do wonder why she knows so much about mid-90s adult film soundtracks. <laughs> Little Witches has now been on my television for just five minutes and 16 seconds. As the movie clumsily moves along, I notice that there are only seven characters in the entire film, despite my screen trying to make me believe there are more. Yes, sometimes there are additional bodies on the screen, but many of the young women in this film feel more like extras than characters. At the end of the film, I am surprised to find out that many of them actually had names. <laughs> Who are the characters in this film, you might ask? Well, there is the good girl, the one who will probably do something with Jesus at the end of the film. There is also a bad girl, and we know she is bad because she performs a stripper routine in the front of the window of her dorm room. There are also three people who work at this church slash boarding school. 
One of them is a super hot nun that I wish had performed a stripper routine in front of a window so that I might watch and know what it is to feel alive again. <laughs> there is also a priest who likes to go fishing and an older nun who seems to scare the schoolgirls because she owns a lot of crucifixes and enjoys eating alone. I am also delighted to find out that the demon in this film isn't a demon at all, but the gremlin stripe from the movie Gremlins. <laughs> <laughs> I am glad to see him getting work. There is also a construction worker love interest whose real name is Tommy Stork. I like saying Tommy Stork. Every time I see this actor's character, I will say Tommy Stork out loud. Little Witches has now been on my television screen for 28 minutes and 42 seconds. While watching this film, I couldn't help but wonder what the other witches in the movie coven were thinking while they watched the film. In my head, I could see Richard Lale starting and stopping the film six or seven times while watching before finally giving up with 20 minutes left to go. <laughs> Heather would, of course, be busy jotting down notes about how Little Witches is representative of Satanic Panic's final gasp and is unrepresentative of the witchcraft films of this new era in filmmaking. And Patty. Oh, Patty. She's such a trooper. Like me, there is no way she would turn this film off. But just like me, she's probably wondering if it is acceptable to drink a whole bottle of wine or to eat several edibles while watching this film. <laughs> and poor, poor Gigi sitting on their couch wondering just what they've got themselves into. Don't worry, Gigi. I often think that too. No doubt the rest of the coven would be thinking that I would be singing boobs and butts, boobs and butts, <laughs> boobs and butts. And of course, I did. And then there's Courtney Buckley, the luckiest of us all, because she did not have to watch tonight's <laughs> film. I envy her and her innocence. My innocence died the moment I began lusting after the super hot nun in this film. <laughs> Little Witches has now been on my television screen for 45 minutes and 57 seconds. I sadly note to myself that the film is only halfway done. Despair etched upon my face. I girded myself for the ordeal yet to come. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant, Jason. You're gonna need to make a book of movie quotes. I I mean I mean movie minutes, Mankey's movie minutes. It's we're all doing the book together. We're all gonna have our bits and those will just be put in there and I save them all in a giant document. So they'll they're preserved. You know, I some of the jokes about Heather were meaner though, and I had to change them because you know, because I blamed her for me watching this movie. So, but I love Heather, so I can't say anything too mean. Hey, you know what? Everybody has their choices, and I fill them in with when we we don't have enough choices from all you guys to fill up the three seven sixty five three hundred and sixty five or fifty two weeks in a year. So I fill in all the other ones with other movies that may be of interest. And I like taking you guys, taking you down some dark roads sometimes. <laughs> I will say, though, I'm going to be giving lectures at festivals, though. And then I'm going to be like, and now Little Witches, 1996. Let me tell you about this film. So it's <laughs> it's going to come in handy as much as and I tease little, and joke. Yeah. How many how many times have we said the witch, the, the, uh, the, the killing tree since we watched the killing tree? It has come up. It has literally come up in conversation at witchy events. Oh, you've got to see the killing tree. <laughs> Just saying. That's such is the power of the witches' movie. Cabin. How little are these witches, though? Like when I think of little witches, I think of Wendy the Good Witch, who is ostensibly a little witch. Like she's literally a little witch. I, I even think of maybe the Munchkins in The Wizard of Oz. Those are <laughs> not witches, but they're little. Even Time Bandits, they're little witches. But these are not so not little. little girls. They're not. They're not little girls, and they're not short girls. They're. They're not. I don't get it. Little they're witches. So, little women. Little witches. Little women. When I think of little witches, I think of sixteen-year-old strippers at at Catholic schools. So it made perfect <laughs> sense to me. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, next week, Xanadu. Xanadu. 
Xanadu, 1980. Everybody find it. Um, sorry, Lisa, you weren't able to find this one. It took me a long time. I had to get a link to YouTube to find the Lisa, one. Lisa, I'm glad you didn't find this one. Okay. So yeah, we, we have enjoy one. Enjoy the small victories, Lisa. That's we how do I have see one it. more thing to do. Everybody, wands up, wands down. Shame. Shame. <laughs> Shame. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this is our first ever almost thing. unanimous thumbs down, is our wands down. That's almost a unanimous wands down. Okay, wands neutral for Robert. Well, I said I didn't see mine is not this, mine is this. You yeah. know, I didn't hate it. I guess I could do that because I did have fun with it back when it when it came out. I did enjoy it, but I, I don't wands think I enjoyed it as a movie. Like Kelvin. Kelvin's got wands up and horns up. I understand that. Down. He must be singing boobs and butts while he's watching this movie. Beautiful boobs, beautiful butts. Yeah. Uh, all right. So we we we've, we've got we're tending towards down on this one. Let's see what we do with Xanadu. Um, while we have a couple seconds left, anybody who have anything they have coming up in the real near future, we need to tell everybody about. Okay. I'll just I <laughs> Go ahead, Patty. <laughs> I'm leaving for Romania after next week's show. I'm so excited. I'm to Romania and then a vampire party in Paris and then Penhurst for all you Americans coming back, Penhurst Paracon, and then a whole witchy weekend in Dallas, Texas. All of that by the end of May. So go to my wow. website, pattynegri.com. Thank you, producer Rob, for this beautiful layout of what's going on. Um, so I'm going to be everywhere in the world so you guys can come see me. And of course, my Witching Hour podcast and everything else going on. So that's all I'm doing. I'm leaving. Bye. Okay. Gigi. <laughs> yes. Um I have lots on my schedule as well. I didn't pull it up to do things. I actually, two weekends ago, I stayed in an old convent. So it kind of fit in with this. It was um, down in Niles, Michigan. We stayed there for the weekend. Lots of fun, lots of history. That's the stuff I like to go do on the weekends. How um, conventional. Yeah. Um. Ah. <laughs> Is it your birthday, Gigi? On Monday. On Earth Happy Day. Yes, thank you. What's that? We are not are going we to sing. sing. We are never going to sing <laughs> again. Never we are going to never sing again. again. <laughs> no, no. All right. All right. So thank you. Uh, Richard Lale. Uh, that is me. I am Richard Lale. I am here in New Orleans. Uh, I, I do readings here in my haunted home. I do readings down in the French Quarter at Apothecary, where you can find me there. Um, you can find me also, if you want to know magic, you can find me at University Magicus, um, magicu.org. And this week we're going to be talking about sigils and symbols and all kinds of wonderful things. And that is this Saturday. Um, Oh, goodness. I think it's 11 a.m. my time. So figure it out. That's what I do. Thank you. Universitymagicus.com, magic with a K or magicu.org. Um, and, and I'm teaching a puppets class next Tuesday. So that's great. So moving on, we teach all this witchy stuff at the school. So, all right. Uh, Jason. It's getting quiet for me, and I'm really excited about it to be home for a while. I, my next big event is the North Dakota Grand Sabbath in the bustling metropolis of Animus, North Dakota. And I was just in Tennessee last week for the Pagan Unity Festival. At home, I'm rapidly finishing up the Raymond Buckland biography, which you will see next May. I'm very excited about that. Thank you. And Heather. Well, I I am here, Gladys, and um, we are going to be um, attending Mystic South, and um, I'm I have that's in uh, July in Atlanta. It's gearing up. Um, Where I'm really excited. I'm honored to be part of the board, and also going to be doing my haunted doll and puppet <laughs> class. And Gladys will might be making a live appearance along with lots of other dolls my annabelle and uh my clarabelle we call her clarabelle and some other ones so come out to atlanta to mystic south and join us for our three days of witchy stuff and other than that i'm working with my wonderful authors every day and which i uh, i love and i'll um some and some writing some articles. Her, 
Her oh. dead eyes scare me. Oh, they're, they're beautiful. Not, they're not actually. They're, they're just very dark. So you can't. They look solid. Dead the eyes. Camera. She actually does not have oh. dead eyes, right? She's no. She's so pretty. She's, she's gonna haunt my dream. She and Robert are gonna like <laughs> team up and like it's gonna be Nightmare on Elm Street, except on the Oak Court where I live. <laughs> Look at it. I'm looking we forward to seeing our coven members. I know Robert Hicks says he's saying, looking, he's going to be there. So I'm looking forward to that. So, yay. Um, yay, Robert. All, all right. We have one more thing to do before you all look for Xanadu next week because it is time to cackle. One, two, three. Yeah. <laughs> 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 